Hey guys, Smarbis here, and today I will be explaining another big feature of the Lord of the Rings mod that is actually so big that I'll have to split it up into two videos. Unit hiring is one of the most important features in the game once you decide to go big and adventure grounds or evade enemy terrain. Now, especially with the alignment system requiring units to be close, it is essential that you know how to bring your troops into battle and make sure they survive. In this video, I will go over the very basics of how to hire units from the appropriate factions, which types of units exist and their basic user interface. The next video will be about how to use them effectively with commanding them, so be sure to keep an eye out for that later. Now for each faction currently in the mod, with an exception of Utumno, it is possible to hire mobs or units to fight for you. Of course, this costs coin, but the required minimum of alignment differs per faction. On top of that, some factions have different traders that allow you to hire troops from them. So on the screen, you will find a list of every single trader right now with their minimum alignment associated. Note how Fangorn isn't on this list because the Fangorn hiring system is different from the rest. There will be a separate video about how to hire Huons on a later date. But the traders that offer units go by different names per faction. Sometimes it's a lord, other times it's a chief or a commander. Either way, they spawn in the factions generated buildings, will wear a cape and hold a weapon and a coin in their hand. And if you can't interact with them, you might most likely don't have the appropriate alignment yet. Now, the type of units available vary from one faction to another. Hobbits do not have as much options as Gondor does, so for the sake of this video, we'll use the Dwarven faction as an example. We start off with the basic man. This is the minimum required alignment, as mentioned earlier, and hasn't really gotten any special benefits. They won't last that long in combat unless you give them custom gear, but we'll get into that later. Next up is a warrior, a basic but strong infantry unit. They usually come in the faction's gear, if the faction has it, and one of the various faction weapons, such as a sword or a spear. Note that some factions have a combination kit, where a unit uses a bow for a long distance, and once the enemy gets closer, they switch to a blade. After the warrior usually follows some form of ranged unit. These can either be bowmen or, in the case of dwarves, axe throwers. They are about the same as the warrior, except they explicitly use ranged. If there aren't any specific alternative kits for the faction, the next unit should be a cavalry melee unit. These, once hired, ride on a mount that has a separate health bar and generally have more speed, and thanks to the mount, more health in combat. Usually there's also a ranged cavalry unit if there's a melee cavalry unit, which once again has the benefits of the mount, but explicitly uses ranged weapons for combat. Last in the line of units is the banner bearer. These units carry the banner of their faction proud and high, and give a buff to several stats of the other units they are paired with. They carry one weapon in their hand aside of the banner, but will mainly stick to the group, so they can optimally buff all the other units. Once you paid for your men, they will follow you around and will display a health bar above their head, as well as the weapon they're currently holding and, if you assign them to a squadron, which we will be looking closer at in the second video, will also be displayed above their heads. By right-clicking on one of your units, you get the choice to talk, command or dismiss the unit. Talk just prompts a random speech bank, command opens an interface and dismiss will unhire your unit from your command, and they will just become a random NPC. Using the command option, it will prompt a display in which the health, status and mob kills are presented. There is a button to go to directives or to replace their equipment. By clicking on the replace equipment button, you get the four armor slots and a weapon slot of the unit. You can equip them with any set of armor, worse or better than their original set, or you can give them any type of melee weapon. You cannot give them a ranged weapon or a different item, um, armor sets that give buffs like Wood Elf and Scout Armor will give them the same buffs to the unit, so equip all your hobbits with Wood Elf and Scout Armor and enjoy the chaos. That's the only way you can do this. But directives show you several options. Guard mode, squadron and teleport automatically. Once you first hire your units, they follow you wherever you go and whenever you go out of a certain radius, they will teleport to you. If you wish for your units to fall behind, you can turn teleport automatically off. Guard mode, however, will prevent your units from chasing after you, but instead will patrol the defined radius for hostile activities. They will stay within the given limit, but will no longer respond to your calls unless you interact with them again to turn guard mode off. Squadrons and their use will be explained in the second video, as well as an alternative way to prevent your units from following you, but instead stick to one location and come to your call as soon as you need them. So stay tuned for that, 
And one final note, if you lose alignment because you killed allies of the faction, your troops can desert from your command. So keep your alignment above the minimum of the most expensive unit. I hope this video has been helpful for hiring your units. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section. Happy hunting and I will see you guys in the second video. Peace out.